Hey guys, just wanted to make a follow-up video to the beginner's guide. Um, I've had some questions and a, a lot of those questions seem to be repeating. So I figured I'd just make another video, post this, and hopefully help you guys get set up when you first get your MIDI bolts. Um, so yeah, the first thing I want to talk about is um, local mode on off. Um, just to be clear, I just want to show you once again um, how you enable this. So what you'll do is you'll hold the hold button then press sync, it'll start blinking. Then you're gonna press this D sharp and then F twice. And basically what that does is it, it disables the sound engine from the key bed. Um, so the way to test to make sure that it worked, if you change this to drone mode while your oscillators are in the mixer section are up, so I'm gonna just turn both these up for oscillator one and two, turn it to drone. And as you can see, I'm playing notes, but the pitch isn't changing. Um, that's how you know that you are truly in local mode off. Um, because obviously, if, if you try to use the MIDI volts with local mode um, on, you're going to get some really weird results. Um, so, and, and that's only when you want to play the keyboard on the grandmother with the MIDI volts. So with that being said, the other question is, well, how do I get you know, local mode back on? So it's the same procedure. You do hold, shift, wait for it to start blinking, D sharp, and then you play G twice. So now, if I go to drone mode, it's working. So, um, yep, just really important. Just wanted to, to clear that up. I definitely don't want people thinking that they broke their grandmother with that setting because it, it does disconnect it, but it's totally normal. It's what it's designed to do, so. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the octave issue that some of you guys have pointed out to me. Um, it seems like after turning local mode off and restarting the grandmother, your oscillators are like super, super low and you can't get the higher range that you've seen in, in my videos. I did just upgrade the Mo grandmother to the newest firmware um, just to try to recreate the problem. And I am able to see um, that issue you guys are, are seeing. So I'm gonna show you um, the issue and then I'll show you how I've um, how I get around it and how to fix it so um, so yeah right now we're on local mode on so let's turn that off and then on D sharp let's do F twice make sure we're off no response so we're good and then I you know restart and now it's gonna be super super low if we do this you can hear it's almost like an LFO signal um, so yeah so how do you fix this? Um, well, the way I have been doing it is I will turn local mode back on, press D sharp, G twice, once again. So now we should be able to, we're back to normal mode. So what you can do is you can actually select your lowest MIDI note that you want the MIDI bolts to play. So it's all based on a reference voltage. So basically if you play a note, you turn local mode off, the note that you last selected is gonna be the reference for the whole MIDI volts five volt range. So what you can do is select what you want your lowest note to be. So let's just say, let's just do this one. So I press this, so without pressing any other keys, let's do hold, sync, D sharp, F twice. So now when we go to drone, that's our new bass reference. So I'm gonna hook up the MIDI volts now. So let's just do, we'll just do duo mode cause it's simple and fast. Um, okay, turn it on. So I'm on, well, we'll do unison. We'll do it the, the right way here. So we'll go to unison mode first. Um, Make sure we're in tune here. Sounds good. Now let's switch to duo. I'm just gonna go to drone mode. So there we go. Another thing I want to talk about too is don't forget you always have your left hand buttons too to adjust your octaves. So you know if you want to go up, you press hold and then the button whichever direction you want to go. If you want to go really low, well. 
So that's how that works. And also, another thing I want to talk about is a lot of people, when they've gotten started, they've noticed that if you get past a certain range, you know, you're not getting a response from the keyboard. So like this whole range here, there's nothing going on. And the reason why is because the MIDI volts only operates across channel, uh, MIDI notes 36 through 95. So these are all lower than 36, so it's not gonna accept the range. MIDI volts only does a range of five volts. Um, so you just have to adjust up and then you're in range, so. So the first thing I usually ask people to do when they message me for help or they're having an issue with their MIDI volts when initially getting set up, I normally have them send me a picture of their power adapter because 95% of the time, that's usually the cause of any weirdness that people are experiencing. So once again, just want to reiterate, the power adapter's got to be a 9-volt DC adapter that's center positive. If it's not center positive, the MIDI volts just won't turn on. Um, this yellow LED will just stay basically off. So that's how you'll know if you have the wrong polarity. Now, if you're using a, a DC adapter that's less than 9 volts, you're going to get some really, really weird results. Weird scaling. It might not even work quite right at all. Um, so definitely, very first thing you want to check, make sure it's a 9 volt adapter um, and you should be good. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, is tuning. Um, most people I've noticed, they can usually get duo mode to work. Um, that one's pretty straightforward and pretty, pretty easy to get going, but poly 3 mode is a little bit trickier because you need to tune your LFO to audio range. So let's just go over that really quick, um, just to be clear. Um, so once again, I'm going to set the mini volts here so you guys can see. And let's just do pitch in on oscillator 1 to V0 pitch. V1 pitch on the MIDI volts to oscillator 2 pitch in. And oops, yeah, pitch on V2 to right in. And then lastly, we need to get it to the mixer. So let's do wave out to noise in. Okay, so first things first, I would always start with unison. Um, so let's just start there. And also, let's just do, it, it's more complicated if you're trying to tune all oscillators at the same time. I usually do one at a time. So let's just keep oscillator one and two up. And let's turn drum mode. And another thing I like to do is I like to shift the octaves up a you know a couple. Just the higher ranges, it's easier to hear the the beating. So okay, that looks good. So that's usually pretty easy. It's usually in the center. Um, so so now let's work on the modulation section here and get that one in tune. So. What I usually do is turn down oscillator two, so I only have two to compare with. So now let's get this one tuned. And what I want to explain too is, I don't think I was clear, but you can actually hold down the hold button while you're adjusting the right knob and you can get fine tuned. So now I'm holding down the, the hold button and it's a little bit easier. So another thing, I don't have the best ear, and a lot of times when I'm tuning, I'll accidentally tune the modulation section like an octave down from what, you know, this oscillator is set at. And it actually usually sounds pretty cool, so it's fun to do that. But when you're expecting, you know, a, tor a normal style plane, and you're getting these weird inversions unexpectedly, it is a little frustrating and confusing. So another thing I usually do is just double check to make sure all my oscillators are in the same octave range. And while you do that, I just turn them all down. And we'll just leave this one up. So that's this oscillator. So let's turn that one down and do, turn this one up. It's the same octave you can hear. When they're together, it's harder to hear if they're the same octave or not, but this is the way I do it. Um, and let's do this last one here. So that's, they're all for sure in the same range, and that's just by hearing it. But when they're mixed, sometimes it's hard to tell. So now let's just do poly 3 mode really quick. So switch to poly 3. Don't forget to switch this to B. And let's just do drawing mode. So you 
can see there, I went low enough that I was out of range of, of the MIDI bolt. So that's why you only saw one LED light up. So just keep that in mind. This is really important when using the MIDI bolts is changing your, your MIDI range. I didn't hear the, the other oscillator just because I had this one turned down. That's the other thing. It's like when you're troubleshooting this stuff, it's so easy to overlook something like that. And you're like, why can I only hear one voice? And it's something simple, like you forgot to turn up your mixer. So, um, so yeah, I, I appreciate your guys' patience with this stuff. I know it's confusing at first, but I feel like, you know, everyone's been really happy with the MIDI Volt so far. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. Um, obviously, still though, if you guys have any questions with this unit, feel free to reach out. Um, last thing I want to say too is if, you know, adjusting the grandmother settings is too much for you, you can always, using an external MIDI controller like the key step, I mean, you can always just do it that way. You don't have to really change anything. Um, you literally just plug in the patch cables and plug the MIDI bolts into the, the key step and everything works fine. So anyways, obviously I'm still going to be here for questions if you guys need it. Once again, I really appreciate your guys' patience and uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing from you guys. All right, bye.